I am a co-founder and the coordinator of a network called Quanten an HAWEN. HAWEN are Hochschulen für Angewandte Wissenschaften, which means University of Applied Sciences. These are the German Fachhochschulen and we have a network on Quanten at Fachhochschulen Consortium. The content of this book, publicity part, uh, was first published in a book by Springer, um, Quanten Computing Compact, that came out last year. Okay, let's jump in. The topic of the talk is teaching. It's, uh, it deals with teaching quantum computing. And teaching is one of the five areas the German government sees divides the quantum field. These five areas are quantum computer and simulation, quantum communication, quantum measuring and sensing, enabling techniques, and outreach. And outreach contains also education. Education means teaching in academia, uh, bachelor's, master's, PhD thesis, but it also includes teaching to the public, teaching to schools, teaching to smaller companies that are not specialized in, in quantum computing or in, in any sense of quantum. And, and that's what we do at the Fachhochschulen, teaching to students who are not specialized not in physics, not in math, not in computer science, for instance, engineers. Uh, so the challenge for us is explain the things as easy as possible. Okay, mm, the original problem, my original problem was teaching teleportation. You see here the circuit of teleportation. If you don't recognize it, it's, it doesn't matter. If you never saw a quantum circuit, just keep in mind this is a quantum circuit, three qubits going through this circuit, and this is a teleportation circuit. And I was to teach a course on quantum computing, and so the question is why does teleportation work? And here's the answer. Oh my goodness, that's cruel. Uh, one can calculate it. One can calculate it. And to me, it was like, I can follow step by step. I can follow from here to there, then to there, to there, to there. I can, I understand everything, but I have not the slightest idea what is happening. Um, and it does not get better when I look to other to other literature, considering unitary matrices, I can follow the calculation, but I have no idea what is the heart and the soul of the algorithm. So the question was, how can it be visualized? Can it be visualized? It seemed to me it was kind of yeah, shifting and, and mixing some numbers, all called alpha. And, and that's exactly what happens in escape room games. Um, if you ever played around with escape room games, there are these challenges, but maybe you also know these kind of challenges. It's, uh, it's for instance, this little tiny puzzle and the task is to put them, the numbers into the right order. Hmm. Moving them around using the free space. More difficult is this guy here. These are wooden pieces and then they have to be shifted so that these two free places go, let's say here, the two free places here. So if you shift that, it's not that the two free, uh, free places are here, only one is there. And, and it's, a, it's a very trickful, shifting and shoveling around these pieces. But if you uh, practice it for some time, uh, then you, you get a feeling for it. You know how to do it. And my hope was maybe 
this same feeling one can also learn for quantum algorithms. Uh, another idea that comes into mind, which at least I've never seen in an escape room, but which is uh, present to everyone, is, is a Rubik's cube. Also here, you have to you have to mix up and turn and and until a, a certain state is achieved. Okay, so the question was: Can this teleportation algorithm, with its with its proof, be visualized in some sense? And the answer is yes, otherwise I would not be here today. Let's see how it works. Some background. Mm, what is the state of the register or of a register, of a register of three qubits? Okay, now some of you who are experienced in, in quantum computing say, of, oh, well, of course, I know that this is a state of a register. It's not new to me, but I know, and I'm very happy that there are some people here who are not so expert in quantum computing, very welcome. And so um, I'll explain for two minutes how one can imagine this. If you are not at all familiar with quantum computing, imagine three coins, three coins that can be thrown and they put as a result, they put a zero or a one. So you throw the first coin, the second, the second and the third coin. And the result is one of eight possible results. First zero, second zero, third zero, or first zero, second zero, third one and so on. Uh, here we have, here we have first one, second zero, third zero, and here all the three are zero, uh, are ones. Okay, and uh, these are the possible results, these in these strange parentheses, okay, um, the possible results, and the alpha are numbers indicating or being referred to the probability that this result is taken. And quantum, are very, quantum bits are very free to take alphas. Um, the only um, condition that has to be satisfied by these alpha is if you multiply every one of them and then add them up, the sum has to be one. Um, I'm talking here for the moment for real of real amplitudes for those who are more advanced. We come to complex uh, amplitudes uh, in some time. Okay, let's look here. Here's alpha zero. Here's an example. Alpha zero is the root of two over 16 squared. It's two over 16. Here, okay, this is zero. Here, alpha two is minus root of two over 16 squared, it's 2 over 16, because minus times minus plus. So we can make a short calculation. If you sum all the squared up, there's 2 plus 2 is 4, uh, plus 0 is uh, 2 plus 0, 2, 4, 7, 8, 9, 13, 16, 16 over 17. So this is a register state. And Usually, it's represented as a vector in an eight-dimensional space. Uh, not so easy to imagine an eight-dimensional space. So the idea for visualizing is we do not use an eight-dimensional space, but we use an ordinary three-dimensional cube, as everyone knows, also children know it, a cube, a cube. This has eight corners, as one really verifies, one, two, three, four, and eight. And what we do is we place, yeah, we place, <laughs> we place these amplitudes in mm, tiny little squares, place themselves place, placed at the corner of the cube. So alpha zero will go there. Um, let me say something to what means, here are the states, the possible results of the coin, and they are ordered at the cube so that each coin or each qubit 
is responsible for one direction. The first qubit is responsible for the left right direction. If the first qubit is zero, then we are on the left. You see here, first qubit zero, 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 zero. And if the first qubit is one, then we are on the right, one, 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 because the resp resp responsibility of the first qubit is left, right. Second qubit has the responsibility of down and up. So down means second qubit is zero, 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 zero. Up means second qubit is one, 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 one. And the third qubit is responsible of, for front or back. Front means zero, 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 third qubit, zero, zero, or back means one, 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 one. So this is how the, the places are laid out. And this is how we put the amplitudes to these squares. The squares, these squares are at the moment are blank squares, they have um, side length one and therefore also area one. Alpha zero goes here, alpha one goes to zero, zero, one, mm -hmm. zero, zero, one, and so on. Alpha seven, seven goes to one, one, one. And if you want, if you want, you can look at alpha four, where goes alpha four? It goes to one, zero, zero. Okay. There will be a, an arrow pointing at it, one, zero, zero. Here's the arrow. That's how the amplitudes are ordered. And it's more visualized than an eight dimensional vector. Here's an example, the example which we had before for three qubits. Okay, we have real amplitudes, real numbers can be zero or negative means red or positive means green, come to complex amplitudes later. And this is how they are placed. Okay, at zero, 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 this amplitude, it's a positive one. And the volume of the square is two over 16. So this the side length of the square is square root of two over 16, a tiny little green square. Um, this goes to zero, here's nothing and so on. The last, imagine what will occur here, here will occur a tiny little squ green square at this point. Mm -hmm. And this one, the amplitude is negative. Negative means it will be red. There will be a red square and it will be of length square root of one over 16. So it will be of length one over four. Here it is, tiny little square, side length one over six, over four, area, um, area one over 16. So to keep in mind, how we imagine a register state of, um, of a register of three qubits. It's uh, from the informatical theory point of view, it's not new. It contains exactly the same information as the coefficient vector, but one can imagine it. Uh, questions so far? Seems to be everything fine. Uh, so register states. Um, we'll take. Uh, we'll talk later on on measuring and on the effect of quantum gates. But for the moment, there are two remarks I'd like to point. Yeah. First remark. Cubes for other n. We had three qubits and they lead us to a three-dimensional cube. 
So for other end, we have uh, n equals one is a one dimensional group. Okay, that's, uh, that's uh, an interval. n equals two is a square. A square, and what we see here is a so-called entangled state of the two qubits. It means that they will both be zero or will both be one. And it will never be the case that they are zero, one or one, zero. A thing that cannot be achieved with real coins, but qubits can do it. N equals three is a cube and N equals four is also possible. Remark two, what about complex amplitudes? Uh, following an idea of Richard Feynman in his, in his wonderful work, Quantum Electrodynamics, uh, we indicate complex numbers as, as arrows in the complex plane, and the addition is the addition, and we write the, um, the corresponding square at the counterclockwise to the arrow. So this is how it looks like. Um, in this talk, I will not go too much uh, to complex amplitudes because the topic of the talk is the method of visualizing. But it is possible also for complex amplitudes like that. Okay, let's go back to the to our register state we had before. And now what means measurement? Measurement of a qubit means removing the uncertainty with respect to that qubit. Um, for instance, if you're thinking of coins, I, throw, I, th have thrown, th I have thrown three coins and you do not know the result and you are looking about the first coin, then you are in one of two worlds. Either the first coin is zero or it is one. And uh, the un uncertainty remains about the other two qubits. So measuring graphically means dividing the cube into two, into two parts, leaving us with two faces of the cube. Then we have to adjust to blow up the squares in order to get the sum of squares equals one. Measurement of two qubits can be visualized like that. For instance, measuring the first and the third qubit will remove the uncertainty with respect to the first and third qubits. So what remains is one of four worlds. This one, this one, this one, this one. If I say to you, well, the first qubit was a one and the, and the third qubit was also a one, then you know mm -hmm, it's either one, zero, one or one, one, one. So the state of the remaining qubit is, is in that state. Now let's go to quantum gates, visualizing quantum gates. I recall that uh, we, are we are talking about teaching and those of you who are familiar with quantum gates will say, hmm, that's not a new message. Um, but I hope that those who are not familiar with quantum gates say, hmm, that's easy. Um, one, and we, we are now we are talking about five types of quantum gate. Okay, first type is Pauli X. Pauli X interchanges, it works on one qubit and it interchanges the two amplitudes. So here's an example, interchanged. Pauli X, X applied on the first qubit means it's applied in direction left, right on the first qubit, but now in a register of two qubits means it will be interchanged along these two edges. Okay, this edge here will be interchanged. The tiny red goes there, the green goes there. Mm -hmm. Tiny red here, green there. Also here interchange, the tiny little green goes there, the big green goes there. That's what is happening when applied to one bit, but in a register of two qubits. Okay, what happens when applied to the third qubit in a register of three qubits. Okay, it will be interchanged along these edges. Shaking the dice, shaking the cube. Okay, so just think a little moment, what will be the outcome? Interchanging along these edges, this, this, 
this and that. And this is the answer. These both are interchanged. This went there, the empty went there. You have nothing and here the red one went there. This is how Pauli X can be visualized. Next gate, second of five, Pauli Z. Pauli Z applied to one qubit changes the color of the one state. So applied to this state, it will change the color here, red. This is unchanged on one qubit. Same story as with Pauli X, applied on the first qubit in a register of two qubits, it will change the color where the second qubit is one, where the first qubit is one. So it will change these two colors. It does things along that direction. This gets red, this gets green. And Pauli Z applied on the third front back qubit in a register of three qubits. What will happen? Okay, here in front happens nothing, back will be changed. So you, you imagine. These two get green. This is what Pauli Z does. Third qubit, for those, for those of you who are familiar with complex gates, phase shift, okay, phase shift turns around. It's a special case of Pauli Z. It turns, it, it turns this, this by, an, by a certain angel. So applied on one qubit, it happens like that. Applied on two qubits, the first of two qubits, it will change everything where the first qubit is one and applied on the now first qubits in a register of three qubits, it will change, it will, it will rotate everything where the first qubit is one. This is the phase shift. Just to say it, it's not needed for teleportation and it's, uh, it's for those who say, I want to see complex amplitudes. Hadamard gate, force of five. Hadamard is a very special gate. It's like, it's like shaking and dividing the squares. Up to now, we, uh, we moved entire little tiny little squares to the other side. Now Hadamard does the following. If applied on that state, that state, it will divide the square into two equal sized squares and put one here and one here. If applied on that state, it will also divide this square of of um, area one into two equal sized squares and put a green one here, here and a red one there. And Hadama applied on an arbitrary state will mix up the two effects. And I guess this is at first glance very difficult to imagine, but if uh, it's for me, it's a typical thing one learns playing a lot of escape room games. You get absolutely specialized in strange things when you are playing escape room games and get a feeling for, well, can also get a feeling for solitaire or minesweeper. So this is a typical thing where one gets a feeling playing a lot of examples. Okay, Hadama applied here to the third qubit, front back qubit, front back qubit in a register of three qubits will, mm, will perform Hadama along these edges. So this will be divided, tiny little green here, tiny little green here. This will be divided and play around with the color, one here, one here. This will de be divided and playing around and, uh, and one half placed here and the other here. And this will be divided and playing with the color here. If the square is at the one state, it's all, always the discussion about the color and one placed here, one placed here. So this is what Hadama does. And one can imagine Hadama shakes the amplitudes. Mixes amplitudes. 
last quantum gate. The last quantum gate that we have take, to take into account is the controlled not C not gate. The C not gate is an, a gate that operates on two quantum bits with one, uh, uh, one control bit that is in this case, it's the first that controls. Control uh, means things are only happening when the control bit is one. So along here, things are happened. And what will happen, happen uh, the target bit will be, a, a Pauli X will be applied to the target bit. So these two will interchange. This is what C0 does. I hope everyone can see. Okay, okay, C0 so, you know, interchanging here, leaves this unchanged. And this goes here, and this goes here. This is what C0 does. Uh, okay, of course, C0 can also be applied on two qubits in a register of three qubits. <laughs> what? Okay, here's an example. We have the second qubit, the down up qubit as control bit. So things will happen only when this control bit is one, which means in the upper phase of the qubit. And here, the, th the first qubit is a target bit. The first qubit will interchange. So that's what C0 does, where the control bit, the second is one, the first will interchange. Okay, this is how one can imagine what does, what C0 does. Now it comes to the original aim. The original aim was visualizing teleportation. To recall teleportation, Alice and Bob are far apart, and but each of the two have um, one of entangled pair of qubits. So this is the situation and Alice has a third qubit. So imagine I am Alice and you are Bob. We have two qubits, mine, which is responsible for left, right, and yours, which is responsible for up, down. And these two qubits are prepared before and one is given to me and one was given to you and then we separate it. We are far apart now. And now I get a, an additional qubit this guy here. I don't know anything about this qubit and I cannot read it because if I read a qubit, it will, it will collapse, it will change its state. It's, uh, that's how qubits are. And the aim is we want to be, we, you and I, I, Alice, you, Bob, want to be in a situation uh, that your qubit, recall you have you have one qubit which was entangled to mine. Your qubit should be in the state of that third qubit without reading the third qubit. Impossible, impossible for classical bits. It's a real, it's a thing which can only be done with quantum bits. Okay, let's see how it works. Um, this is a starting situation, our two qubits and the third qubit. And if we see these three qubits as one register, it looks like that. It looks like what? It looks like, okay, our two qubits are, are positioned here and here. So we see here's something, here's something. And Alice's, uh, and the third qubit adds a third dimension, but also in the third dimension, there's this effect here's something, here's something. Here, 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 here. And, um, what is where? What is where is, um, is defined by the third qubit. So the qubit says, uh, in front, I'm a, a tiny little green. So we in front have tiny little green times tiny little green makes tiny little green. And in back, I am a big uh, red one. So we say, well, okay, in back, we have tiny little green times big red means red minus times plus means minus. And so this is slightly bigger, but it's not as big as that because it's multiplied with that. And the same situation here. So this is the starting situation of the teleportation algorithm. How does it work? Okay, 
Let's look at it closely. This is the circus. What happens? We are starting with this situation. Now Alice, I apply a C naught and on my qubit and I, the control bit is the third qubit. Okay, C naught on my qubit, control bit is third qubit, which means uh, the whole situation is interchanged along these two arrows. Mm -hmm. This goes here, nothing goes there, nothing goes there, this goes here. This is what C0 does. Next, we apply Hadamard. Recall Hadamard was this guy that divided the tiny little squares in two pieces and put one there and one on the, on, on the other side of the edge. And it's especially easy to see if one side of the edge is empty. Here we apply Hadama to the third qubit. Okay, um, this red will be divided in two, two who have the property that the sum of the sum of the areas is this area here. Uh, leads to this color interchanging. D don't look too, too much to the colors. Just believe me, this is what Hadama does. Uh, those who know Hadama will say, yeah, yeah it's okay. Um, this green here will be divided in two very tiny little green ones. Here. Also this one, very tiny little green ones here. And this will be divided into two tiny, but not so tiny the back one is green and the front one is right. Okay, now Alice applies Hadama to that's what I do. You are still Bob and have, have you have nothing to do with all this. It's all what I'm doing. And now I measure the first and the third qubit. First and third qubit measurement means the system remains in one of four states. And I, Alice, know in which state because I have the result, first and third qubit. For instance, I have both of them are zero. Then I know the, the remaining qubit, the second, which is at you. Your qubit, your qubit now is in this situation. Um, this is, um, Okay, numerically one can see it. Also, I think here shifting all these tiny little squares, one can see it very well, but for those who are not so familiar, it's incredible to believe that if I'm doing something, your qubit changes, but it is the case since, since the qubit are entangled. Uh, Einstein called this effect spooky action at a distance. Um, and Bohr said, who, has, who, who says who understood quantum dynamics and is not shocked, has not understand it. That's what quantum bits do. If I change something here, it might be the case that your, your reality changes. Okay. But coming back to the illustration of the teleportation algorithm, I measured these, the two qubits I had at my laboratory my and the third one, and it came out, okay, both zero, so I know your qubit is in that situation. Or my result measuring the first and the third qubit was first is one and third is zero. Okay, then I know your qubit is in that state. Or first was zero and third was one, then I know your qubit is in that state. Or both of the two were one, then I know your qubit is in that state. Okay, almost done. Now I phone to you. Hi, Bob. Bob, listen, my result was the following and I'm telling you what was my result. Now what you do is, okay, now it's your turn, it's your turn. You know that your qubit is in one of these four columns. And you know in which column, because I phoned you and told you this. Uh, recall the starting situation. The starting situation was that this, this, first, this third qubit had a tiny little green in front and a, and a, and a large red uh, backwards. 
So the goal is that you, Bob, now transform your qubit uh, so that it has a tiny little green well, at the zero state and a big red at the one state. How can you do this? If I said to you that your qubit is in that situation, I measure at zero, zero, you do not have to do nothing because it's already in the state. If I said to you, your qubit is in that situation, so I me measured zero and one, then you see, hmm, hmm, almost good, almost good. Tiny little green is okay. You want a tiny little green and a, and a big red. Um, tiny little green is okay, but this should change its colors. Well, apply Pauli Z and it changes its colors. The upwards changes its color, Pauli Z. If I told to you your qubit is in that state, then um, you know, okay, tiny little green upwards, big red one down, uh, want to interchange it, want to interchange it. So what can be done to interchange it? Pauli X, Pauli X changes the two and you arrive in this situation. Or I told you the fourth situation so you know uh, both my qubits were one. So you know, mm -hmm, uh, my qubit now is in the situation, big green downwards, little green upwards. So what has to be done is interchange them. Then you have tiny little green downwards and big green upwards, and then apply Pauli Z to change the color here. And in every case, you have, you have your qubit is in the state mm -hmm that the, the third qubit was at the beginning of the experiment. That's how quantum teleportation works. And at least to me and to my students, it's now clear. Well, okay, yeah, would have been possible. Maybe if the question was both right to, to find the algorithm. Um, I hope nobody of you missed the, the computational steps with unitary matrices and, and so on. Um, there is an other example or, or other questions up to now. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, I think no, no questions. So I come, I hope everyone of you takes this message home. Teleportation is just shaking a cube with tiny little squares on its corners. Other example, yeah. The very famous Deutsch Yosha algorithm. I go briefly through it. Those of you who know it will know it. It's one of the famous thing also to illustrate what quantums can do. Um, yeah, uh, problem is we are given a function that takes one bit and outputs one bit. So there are four of these functions: take one input, zero, one, and output one output. And there are four possibilities, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. Now, classically, to, um, to, uh, to know are uh, the questions whether, decide whether f is a constant function, one of these two, or whether f is a so-called balanced function, which means one of these two. Classically, if I say to you, well, yeah, I have here a black box calculating this f, and you have to decide whether it's constant or balanced, you have to ask me twice. Because if you ask me once and say, what is the value of if I input zero and I say to you, well, the value is one, then you don't know whether it's constant or balanced. You have to ask a second time. And with quantums, it, work, it works asking the quantum box only one time. Impossible, no, yes, here's the quantum circuit. What does the quantum circuit? The quantum circuit starts with the state zero, one, applies two times Hadamard, shaking the dice 
applying once the oracle, reapplying Hadamard and measuring. And if the output is zero, then F is constant. If it's one, F is balanced. Uh, okay, that's how it can be visualized. Looks slightly different now, but okay. The starting situation is that all the white at the state zero, one. First Hadamard mixes, second Hadamard mixes in that direction. Then comes the call of the function. And what this call does, it exchanges down up arrows. In the, um, in the case the function is one, uh, it exchanges this, these two if the function applied to zero is one and exchanges this two if the function applied to the, to one is one. So if f equals zero, nothing is interchanged. If f equals one, everything is interchanged. If f is the identity, only here is interchanged. And if f is the not, then only here is interchanged. That's what the oracle does. Then we read uh, shuttle the cube, uh, Hadama, Hadama on the first, that collects on one side or on the other side. Hadama on the second collects up or down. And then measuring the first qubit, one, one might, one sees here, one might also not do this because then measuring the first qubit, measuring the first qubit removes uncertainty with the first qubit. And in the case F equals one, the result will be zero because the first qubit is always zero. There's no probability for one. If F was one, the first qubit will also be zero because there's no probability for one. If F was identity, the first qubit will be here. Hmm? No probability for zero, it will be one. And if F was not also here, the result will be, will be one. So measuring the first qubit, if the result is zero, then we were in one of these two situation, constant. And if the result is one, we were, were in one of these two situation, balanced. That's the trick with Deutsch Joscha. Visualizing Deutsch Joscha. Okay, play with it. Uh, we wrote a program, it's called Kurakel um, at the THM and it can be it can be downloaded from my homepage page. Here's the link. I think uh, it's okay for me if the slides are distributed. So you have the link. It's at my homepage and uh, you, can, you can download it and play around shaking the cube or the, the one dimensional cube, the two dimensional and the three dimensional cube. Work is ongoing. Okay, what are, what are we working at? We're working at one is visualizing other algorithms. For instance, uh, Groover's search. Groover's search on, works on four qubits, but it's still possible. This is one. The second, extend, extend everything to complex gates. What we see here is a quantum Fourier transformation. You see, uh, okay, split up completely and all these tiny little, tiny little arrows pointing in each direction. This is quantum Fourier transformation. And more technically, we are trying to enable, no, we are not trying, we will enable the program for, uh, for a browser to be applied in a browser. Summary. What were the main ideas of the talk? Okay, the, uh, the, the main idea of the talk was that this sequence here is the heart of teleportation. And well, tell, and this is the heart of te teleportation, but also the message it's teleportation can be visualized in that way. It could be in an escape room game, shakes the cube so that these tiny little squares arrive in the right position before measuring, when measuring so the right result comes out. Higher levels of the game would be mixing, uh, Hadamah is mixing squares, 
and rotating squares uh, and also mixing rotated squares, which, which is uh, a little more sophisticated as a complex addition. One has to go an intermediate step on the arrows in that case and on the higher levels. Okay. <laughs> who wants to play around with it, imagine square root of x gate or uh, icing coupling gate RxX. Uh, this is for the more advanced ones. Um, play around with it. And please contact me for teaching quantum computing. Thanks a lot. Your questions or remarks. It's so quiet. Uh, yeah, there's a question of, do you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we, we, oh, we okay. hear you. Thank you so much for, for the presentation. I'm very amazed about um, this topic. Okay, so um, I'm looking to the, yeah. The, there was a question. Um, um, from um, Eduardo Palladini. I'm loving uh, the presentation and uh, loving the ideas. I would like to see more materials and information about it. Is there any site uh, link you, you, could, you could share with us? Any more uh, groups or some, some articles or pages to subscribe? <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, of course I use uh, the, well, one is the book, it's in, uh, I mentioned the book at the beginning, uh, it's a Springer book, Quantum Computing Compact. I write it. It's in German, however, or maybe it's an advantage that it's in German. Um, we have a LinkedIn group, it's called Quanten an HAW, and it's, uh, it's really work in progress. It's, uh, it's not very much published. I think um, apart from lectures at the THM, this is the world first time to present the method. Um, but if you are interested in following, uh, uh, in, in, in participating, what is happening, please uh, connect with me in LinkedIn, for instance, and then you'll also see the group. Or if you want to, uh, you, you can see the material on quantum computing also on my homepage. <laughs> English book, okay, I'll, say, I'll, tell that to, um, I'll tell that to Springer. <laughs> um, Hello, Bettina. This is uh, Christoph. Actually, Thank, I think it's a it's a great method you presented here to to teach, I guess, people visually what the the quantum algorithms do. And you yourself, I think, have used them quite a bit. Do you think this can also help people to actually come up with algorithms, so not just illustrate algorithms that already exist, but also invent new ones using the graphical design? Um, yes, I think it could. Um... Okay, these uh, algorithms I explained are the, are the very first algorithms one learns when dealing with quantum computing, teleportation, deutsch yasha algorithm. Um, the algorithms that are, uh, that are used in, uh, in modern algorithms for optimization, for instance, um, use more complicated gates. Uh, this RxX gate, for instance, changes around on one face of the cube. So that goes here, these two interchange and these two interchange. But um, still applied to, let's say, applied to the first and second of qubits in a register of three qubits, it will happen on this face and on the backwards face. Um, I think it's very good to get a feeling 
for how these quantum circuits are working. Of course, um, bigger algorithms like uh, like Shor's factorizations um, work on so many qubits that it's not possible to visualize them completely. But I think one gets a feeling for what is happening playing around with it in three dimensions. And then one can imagine what is happening in higher dimension. There, however, if one is trained to think in higher dimension because one is a physician or mathematician. I imagine it can be possible to find in that way to, to be creative and find new algorithms, yes. Thank you very much, thank you. Isn't the Hadamard gate also a superposition? Is there? Yes. Uh, Hadamard, uh, Hadamard, go back to Hadamard. Hadamard gate applied to one, this is called a pure state, divides that up in the two, in the two smaller squares and divides that up into two smaller squares and um, and uh, and, uh, and distributes them. And if it's applied to a qubit not in a pure state, which is in a qubit which has tiny little angles in the two positions, then both effects will overlap. And if a red and a green meet, one is positive, one is negative, then they will cancel each other. That's the trick with Hadamar. But it's a basic of the trick with Hadamar. In the teleportation algorithm, however, Hadamar is only applied to these basic states. Go to teleportation algorithm. You see Hadamar is only applied when one of the two is empty. In this sense, teleportation is easy to uh, is, is very easy to to get a little bit used to Hadama. Please contact me on um, if you want more on teaching. If you have any questions, contact me on uh, per mail. Also visible on my homepage. You can contact me per mail or join the link, join me per LinkedIn. Thanks, Shaknosa. Okay, I don't see more questions. Very big thanks for this absolutely great presentation and uh, amazing idea of um, visualizing um, dimensions uh, because it's, it's a very hard topic for me, quantum computing. And uh, having uh, like shapes that I know <laughs> it makes it easier. <laughs> to understand how, how it could be with eight dimensions. It's, thank you so much for presenting and working um, on this. And um, um, thank you so much. Um, Don't mention it. The pleasure was completely on my side. OK, then um, thank you, Bettina. Thank you, everyone in the chat. and. Um, um, Let's close our session. Um, I will provide um, uh, all the links um, Bettina mentioned in uh, uh, in her speech, and also um, I will provide uh, the recording of this uh, session. Okay. Thank you so much, all. See Thank you. Thank you, Shaknola. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks.